So I absolutely love Resident Evil. I think that at its core, every single game is built around a very simple concept, which is just that, oh no, there's a monster attacking me, but fortunately I have this gun. And so really that's what the series is about, is it's about monsters attacking and then using weapons to defeat them. And there's not much else to it, to be quite frank. You know, this isn't Silent Hill where you're working through your repressed guilt or you're trying to fight a cult. This isn't Fatal Frame where there are ghosts. Really, Resident Evil, I think, is just the most simple kind of horror, which is, oh no, there's something in this house with me and I'm scared. And because it's a very simple premise, I think that you can do a lot with it. And they have done a lot with it over the past, what, like 30 years? So you end up with all these different interpretations of the very basic concept. I think that the fact that the premise is so adaptable is part of the reason why each game is different. If you look at the old stuff, you have these fixed camera angles and a large emphasis on survival. And then you look at some of the newer games and, you know, it's just quick time events all over the place. And then you have co-op in there too, which is a completely different thing. I think Resident Evil is going through a bit of an identity crisis at this point, simply because of the fact that each game is different. And so because of that, each game has different fans. I don't think the fan base of Resident Evil is divided quite as drastically as some, but I've definitely seen comments from people rejecting the newer first person games because they aren't in third person. I think that you'll also find people who say that any game that doesn't feature fixed camera angles isn't a Resident Evil game. Some people say that any game that tries to be too action-y isn't Resident Evil. I think Capcom fully knows this and understands it, that there are many splits within the fan base, and I think that's why the recent Resident Evil games have been so different from each other. If you look at the last four or so Resident Evil games, seven was a return to really scary, spooky stuff, and I think that it dared to be a lot grosser than some of the other games in a very sadistic kind of way, and then you have the remakes of two and three, which are a return to the classic stuff, obviously because they're remakes, but still there's some action to them. I know that many people think that the Resident Evil 2 remake is an absolute masterpiece and it's what every Resident Evil game should strive to be. Then you have Resident Evil 8, which even though it's a direct sequel to 7, has more action and it seems to be a lot more adventurous. They pulled back on some of the kind of disgusting gross out horror, though I think some of it's present for sure. Then if you go back further, games like 5 and 6 have co-op and they certainly have their fans. And then if you go back further, you have Resident Evil 4 fans who absolutely adored the game for being a perfect blend of action and horror. And then of course you have the fixed camera angle fans from the PSX days who just want Resident Evil to be like that again. I think there are obviously common themes between all of the games. There's usually some kind of zombie-like enemy. There's usually a dog enemy. Sometimes you'll have like a plant enemy. For me, Resident Evil 8, I think marked a huge shift in the series because they seem to be drawing a lot more on folklore. You have characters that are supposed to be vampires and some that are supposed to be witches and you have werewolf type enemies. And so I think in a lot of ways it feels like with 8, they've kind of just said, screw it, we're gonna do what we want, <laughs> pretty much. There are so many things that are reminiscent about past games when it comes to Resident Evil 8, but I think that if you look at the enemies, and I think if you look at the presentation of the game, it just feels different. It feels like they're trying to go into a new direction, but then the problem is that you have all these fans from the other games, you know, who want there to be co-op, or they want for there to be crazy obtuse puzzles. I think some Resident Evil games have tried to play to different audiences. Like, if you look at 4, for instance, there's a very clear focus on action, but it still retains a lot of the horror elements, I think. I think Resident Evil is an absolutely massive franchise, and as with any kind of big thing like this, I think that the more cooks you have in the kitchen, the more it becomes diluted over time. So I think that's one of the reasons why you're seeing so many different types of games. Let's go ahead and take a moment to look at all the different types of past games. So I'm gonna try to stick these games into different categories, but quite frankly, I think that you could make a case for some of them being in the other category, or you could say that some games deserve their own category or whatever. So I just wanna acknowledge that and say that this isn't perfect. So the first group I have is traditional horror titles. I think what defines these games is their tank control scheme, their scarce ammo, and then their weird puzzles. So the games that fall into this category are the first three Resident Evils, Code Veronica, Resident Evil Zero, the remake of Resident Evil 1. I'm probably forgetting a couple. I know there are a lot of people out there who absolutely adore these games, and I really enjoy a lot of them too, especially the Resident Evil 1 remake, which I think is one of the greatest survival horror games ever made. But quite frankly, I don't think we're ever going to see a return to this kind of style. Unless you're already a classic survival horror fan like I am, then I think it's it's really difficult to actually sell these games to someone. Quite frankly, I'm surprised that we haven't seen more indie titles try to replicate this feel, but I think that ultimately there's a reason for it, which is just that they are kind of clunky and they are a little bit messy. They control a bit weird, and at the time, it was the best they could do. And I think they're absolutely wonderful still, but there are definitely some things that are better nowadays. For instance, I think it's nice whenever you can actually control your character with ease. <laughs> 
So I do love these games and I love similar games like classic Silent Hill, but I don't think that we're ever going to see a return to it. Then next up we have the action-y titles. Quite frankly, I don't think it's possible for a series like Resident Evil to go on forever without turning into a series of action games. If you look at even the classic survival horror titles, they always end with a freaking rocket launcher blowing up the villain. Plus, the characters you always play as are well-trained cops and police officers, and so it just makes sense that at some point they would start fighting back. With that being said, I don't think that you have to go as far as Resident Evil has. You know, there's the infamous boulder punching scene, of course, which is really a great example of everything that changed with the series, I think. I think it's inevitable that horror characters will turn into action heroes if they live long enough, just because of the fact that you pick up experience. You know, Resident Evil doesn't have a focus on psychological horror or spiritual horror, like with ghosts, or anything like that. It's always physical. It's always something that you can punch and fight with your bare hands if you need to. <laughs> I'm not saying you'll win, but still, quite frankly, if the things that you're fighting are mortal and all you have to do to get rid of them are shoot them with guns, then I think that you have a limited shelf life anyways for them as horror enemies. But I think it's absolutely fair to say that these types of action games maybe go too far at points. When I refer to the action games, I'm talking about games like 4, 5, 6, Revelations, Revelations 2, Operation Raccoon City, which is one that's been swept under the rug for good reasons, and I know there are some others that I'm forgetting. So if you compare the gameplay of something like Resident Evil 1 Remake to what I think is the best action title for, it's obvious that they're different games. If you watch them, it's clear that Resident Evil Remake is just so much slower paced and Resident Evil 4 is all about action and doing suplexes on cultists and whatever. So I think it absolutely makes sense that you would have people who are fans of one but not the other. Even though these games are both Resident Evil, it's clear that there has been a shift in focus. I think these action games are really a lot of fun, but it's clear that they give you a different feeling than the originals. Even though these games are dumb, they're a lot of fun, and there's a reason why people love these games and play them to this day. I think it's worth noting that you could probably count the co-op games as separate from the other action titles, and I think that you would have good reason to, just because the co-op experience is very different from the single player experience. Because I think if you have an action horror game like Resident Evil 4, even though you are super powered and you have a shotgun and rifle and you get rocket launchers, I think that there are still elements of horror in there, and I think there are times when the game is still pretty spooky and kind of strange. I think this is especially true in the first area of the game, the village portion, where you don't exactly know what's happening, you just know it's something really bad and creepy. Then, personally, I stick Resident Evil 7 in a category all on its own, because like I mentioned, it does seem sadistic. At its core, I think it's a very classic Resident Evil, and I think it has a lot in common with the fixed camera angle games, because you do have to find puzzles and keys, and you have to go around in a residence which hasn't been the case since the first game, where you're actually just walking through a house and that's more or less the entire game. But even though 7 has a lot of characteristics of classic games, like I said, I think that there's just a really disgusting element of it where it tries to gross you out, and I think there's also a dark comedy element to it, which none of the other games have. I think the chainsaw boss fight with Jack, for instance, is absolutely freaking nuts, and it's one of the craziest Resident Evil moments ever, because this guy is going absolutely nuts and you're just trying to fight him with a chainsaw. It's absurd. And so I do think there is a comedy element that they didn't really bring back for 8, but I would love to see it return in some form or another. When I say that this game is gross in a way that others aren't, I think that probably sounds pretty weird considering that every Resident Evil game is gross. This is a game series that's about body horror, and it's about people doing horrible things to their bodies and mutating them and just changing them in disgusting ways. So, whenever I say that Resident Evil 7 is grosser than the rest, I'm referring to moments like whenever Ethan has to stick his entire arm down into the cop's body to get a key. That's a moment that's just sickening. Resident Evil 7 is one of my favorite Resident Evil games but it doesn't even feel like a Resident Evil game until towards the end, just because it feels so different. I remember that whenever I played it back when it first came out in 2017, I was shocked at just how different it was from all the others. It's worth noting that this game also made people interested in Resident Evil again after the mess that was 6, so kudos to it for that. Then, I don't know if these games deserve their own category, but they're getting one. You have the remakes of Resident Evil 2 and 3. Again, these games are remakes, so they do have a lot of the elements of those classic fixed camera angle games, but again, if you you look at them, they look closer to Resident Evil 4 than they do to the remake of 1, and I think that they fall into this category because they're a weird hybrid of the fixed camera angle stuff and the action stuff. I think that they have elements of both, but again, they feel kind of different. They feel like they're their own thing. I think that this is one of the reasons why the fixed camera angle games will never come back, because they can just do games like this that retain a lot of the elements of them without having clunky controls. Then for a second, I want to talk about one of the most hated types of Resident Evil games, which quite frankly, I don't even think that most people consider or remember or think about the multiplayer games. For whatever reason, Capcom keeps on trying to make a competitive multiplayer game. It hasn't worked yet, and they're on like try three. So I'm talking about games like Umbrella Core, 
Resident Evil Resistance, and then one that isn't even out yet, Resident Evil Reverse. No one really seems to care about these games, and I think that Capcom's just trying to have a big multiplayer hit so that way they can make more money, which is admirable or whatever, who cares? But I don't think that it's gonna work because no one plays Resident Evil for multiplayer. I would argue that even the people who like the co-op games don't have any interest in multiplayer games. Who knows, maybe Reverse will come out and it'll blow all of our minds, but if I had to bet money on it, I would bet that it's not gonna do anything. Then, like I mentioned before, there's Resident Evil 8, which is just kind of a weird thing on its own because it's first person, like 7, but also it feels action-y and it, at some points it feels almost like a remake of 4. Like, it's clearly not a remake of 4, and that's gonna come out eventually, but it draws a lot on 4 and takes a lot of inspiration from that game. But still, it feels like it's trying to do something else. It feels like with 8, they're trying to branch out and expand what Resident Evil is even further. So you have this guy who has Magneto-like powers where he controls metal or something, and then you have the witch, and then you have uh, the vampires, and you have the werewolves, and whatever else. It's Twilight, basically. But they're all given a quote-unquote rational explanation. They're all explained by science and viruses, which is a very traditional Resident Evil thing to do. So I think that with all of this, I have to ask the question, what is Resident Evil supposed to be? It feels like everyone has their own favorite kind of Resident Evil game. Some people really love the 2 remake, other people love 8, other people love the very first Resident Evil game. Personally, I'm a huge fan of 4, but I also really love 8. So it just feels like everyone has their own favorites. So given that you have a billion different people with a billion different tastes and a billion different reasons why they like these games, what are you supposed to do with that? Like I've said, I think that Capcom knows that Resident Evil is having a bit of an identity crisis, and I think that they've tried to address it as early back as 6. If you look at Resident Evil 6, that game was an absolute mess. It tried to cater to too many people at once and it ended up being something that absolutely no one gave a crap about. There were four different campaigns, each with their own different characters, and so each campaign was supposed to embrace a different style of Resident Evil. So Leon's campaign was supposed to be traditional survival horror, Chris's was supposed to be Call of Duty for some reason, Jake was supposed to be action adventure and kind of like Uncharted, I remember it being described as, and then you have Ada who was trying to do like a spy mission type thing. I think that the problem with this approach is that only the first two campaigns actually had any fans. Hardcore Resident Evil fans play the game because they like horror, and then you have action fans who play it because they like action, you know, they like Resident Evil 5 or whatever. But absolutely no one has ever picked up a Resident Evil game to try to play some kind of spy mission. It just doesn't make any sense. So I think Capcom got smart after that, and they just started to make a bunch of different games. Historically speaking, they've always kind of made different Resident Evil games. If you look at the original PlayStation, you have the classic fixed camera angle games, but you have something like Survivor, which is in first person. So Capcom has always made different kinds of Resident Evil games. In the past five years, you've had seven, two, three, and eight come out, and they're all completely different games. But I think it's important to note that they're all considered mainline Resident Evil games. They're all numbered. So these aren't some rinky dink spinoffs that they're putting out. These are like the big ones, pretty much, and they're all completely different from each other. So that to me is Capcom acknowledging that they know that Resident Evil is a bunch of different things. I think that in a lot of ways, Capcom is trying to have their cake and eat it too. I think that they've learned that they can make people happy by giving them what they want, you know, and making different kinds of games. But I think they learned from the failure of Resident Evil 6 that they don't need to try to pack it all into one game. They can just do a bunch of different games and people will play them. Like personally, I'll play all these freaking games. I don't care. I love Resident Evil. Like it's a silly series and I absolutely adore it for some reason. So I think that the series is kind of messy because of that. And I think that as we move forward into the future, future Resident Evil games are going to continue being wildly different from one another. So I'm arguing that Resident Evil is going through a bit of an identity crisis, but ultimately I think that's the reason why it's managed to stay alive for so long. If you look at other horror franchises, all of them have pretty much died out except for Resident Evil. There hasn't been a Silent Hill game for 10 years, and there hasn't been a really really good one in almost 20 years. Dead Space died, though I think I heard that it's getting a reboot. The Evil Within was a lot of fun, but ultimately I think that series is dead too. Clock Tower is dead, Fatal Frame's dead. Amnesia was big for a bit, but ultimately I don't think anyone cares about it after the first game. So Resident Evil is the only one still alive, and I think it is because of the fact that it is ultimately some kind of chameleon. It just twists and changes, and because of that it's able to adapt to the time. And again, going back to the basic premise, it's just about shooting monsters. There's not really anything else to it. You're not trying to overcome the loss of your wife or anything like that. It's not a serious game series. I think that the shifts in style and the constant changing up of these games is the reason why the series is so relevant, even now. The series refuses to stagnate, and like one of its monsters, it just mutates like crazy. I think that another reason why the series is still big is because of the fact that even though it does gravitate towards all these different styles and try to pull all these 
these different things into it. It doesn't do it poorly for the most part. There are probably like six different games that you could argue are the best Resident Evil games, and they all fall under different styles. You know, people love the remake of one, people love the original and the remakes of two, people love four, people love seven, people love eight. All these games are different from one another, and I think you could make a case for any one of them being the best Resident Evil game. And that to me is what makes the series special, because it is a mess and it is all over the place, and you don't know what you're getting whenever you open up a new game, but you know that whatever is in there, it's going to be a wild time. Are there going to be cyborg zombies in 9? I don't know. Are there going to be cyborg alligators? I hope so, that would be cool. Are there going to be fish monsters? Probably. Are there going to be zombies? I have absolutely no clue what Resident Evil 9 looks like, because they keep on changing it up. Every time I think I know what Resident Evil is, they just add in something new. Like, I never thought I would play a Resident Evil game with vampires in there. I think there are times when people talk about what it means to be a real fan, quote unquote, whatever that means. And quite frankly, you can like the games you like. You know, if you only like 4, and that's the only Resident Evil game you like, more power to you. If you're not a fan of the first person games, so be it. If you only like the co-op ones because you only like playing with your friends, that's cool. I think all of these perspectives are fair. Even though I personally enjoy pretty much every game that they've put out, I understand that I'm not everyone. Not everyone likes horror, not everyone likes action, not everyone likes weird fish people. So at the end of the day, I think that Resident Evil will continue to be big and I think it will continue to grow because of the fact that it just changes with the times. It does what it wants. Like I said, as long as there's a monster and you have a gun to shoot it with, it's Resident Evil. If there's a monster, then it's Resident Evil really. I don't even know that you need a weapon. If at some point they put out a Resident Evil game that doesn't even have monsters in it and it only has human characters, then it will probably be fine. Again, Resident Evil is physical horror, and so it's kind of all over the place. I think that even though Resident Evil is just focused on physical horror, at the end of the day, that's one of its strengths. So I love the series, and as long as the games keep on being good, I'll keep on playing them.